so <laughs> they just started drilling or something out there. It's stopping and starting. I am getting into the pre the pre-show. And so I don't even know if I'm going to post this. If I do, welcome to this pre-show. Um, this is me pulling some cards to just oh, here we go. One card trip one card flipped. The three of Oh, this is three of water or three of cups. Um, trying to get it so you can see the artwork, but not the glare. There we go. Three of cups. Um, oh, that was quick. Um, King of Earth. That's awesome. King, oh, let me show you. I'm all mesmerized by it. <laughs> King of Earth. And, let's see what else we got here. Oh. Union. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then one, um, one Archangel Tarot card, which this is from, this is just a, a chunk, just the Major Arcana from the Angel Tarot by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. Um, so I was guided a couple weeks ago and I have not used this deck since or a week ago, however long it's been to, uh, separate these out and we get the star with Jophiel. Happy, what does it say? Happy times make positive, optimistic, long-term plans on the right path. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, so we're going to get quickly into the three of cups. I opened right up to love for whatever that means. <laughs> um, the love card. And just to let you know, this deck is kind of different from other decks, which is why I really like it. Um, just the... The major arcana she has named all differently and added a couple so there's like 25 major arcana instead of pages and and knights or kings or knights or sorry <laughs> daughters and sons or you know that whole the two before the king and the queen or the or the mother and the father uh that those two positions are something completely different depending on the suit itself. So we didn't get one of those cards, but, um, but it's just a very different and pretty and magical, uh, beautiful, beautifully put together lot. This guidebook is just ridiculous with so much information. Oh, I had it. <laughs> uh, and anyway so it's just a little bit different so i and i'm learning it i'm i'm still learning it so i am uh really wanting to spend like to look at the book um so we're gonna get into the three of water um maybe my light's on too bright i don't think so I mean, if every light feels bright to me, so it's hard to tell, but I also need to be able to see what I'm doing. So hopefully we're good. Hopefully the sound is good and the picture's good um, here. Okay, three of water, satisfaction, pleasure, joy, hopefulness, anticipation, attachment, expectation, disappointment. Celebrate your victories, take satisfaction from your endeavors, look to the future with anticipation. Your success will continue. A rewarding outcome 
an exciting future feel sorry free yourself of unrealistic expectations allow the outcome to manifest freely and meaning the three of water represents satisfaction and indicates that you have come to a time to rejoice in life and your success she stands tall and confident with arms raised in victorious celebration. She has invested greatly in her creative endeavors and is well satisfied with her progress and accomplishments so far. She is positive and hopeful that her success will continue. And so she turns to greet the future with anticipation and excitement. This card is a positive affirmation and symbolizes the joyous potential for a rewarding outcome. It also signifies okay. <laughs> It also signifies the importance of taking time to appreciate appreciate, celebrate and enjoy yourself along the way. Look back and be proud of what you have accomplished. Do a little victory dance before turning once more to the future with a heart full of hope and a smile upon your lips. It is important to allow yourself these moments of joy and celebration and to remember them. Uh, potential blockage. The three of water reversed, even though it's not appears in order to caution us against weighing down a potential outcome with the burden of our expectations make sure your hopes and desires are realistic and let go of those that are not free yourself of the binding nature and weight of unrealistic expectations and in doing so allow the outcome you seek to manifest its own way and time remember the more you expect the more disappointed you will be if if the future you hope for does not unfold as you imagined okay well the, first off this is really cool because it's speaking to um like taking a little pause here before moving on to recognize you know the work that we've done what where we've been what we've accomplished the successes or the um the the moving forward with our work or just all of that whatever that we've done especially in the last in in this the short distant past um to really take a look at it and see where we where we were and where we are and what's changed in just the last month before we get into a new month and a new set of timelines changing um coming through to change stuff to think about what's already changed and where we are and what we have um what we've already accomplished like that sort of thing so that's that first off is is like the first message that i i feel here um and being realistic about expectations um like really trying not to have a whole lot of expectations it feels like uh is really what it's saying to remind us to just do and be and go as guided um into the future without thinking like oh it's gonna go like this and like this and then this is gonna happen and um, just have a more broad understanding of or expectations about how you'll feel what you know I'm going to be grateful for however this plays out I'm open to change I'm open to my guidance I I just I want to you know fill in the blanks about what you're what you want ultimately but don't pigeonhole the possibilities because then you're blocking off the energies coming to you and or coming through in all sorts of strange weird and magical ways that you couldn't possibly foresee so a lot of times people get really um targeted in how an outcome how a situation how anything is going to go and when it doesn't meet those specific criteria and expectations then you're upset because it didn't go as planned instead of just being like i'm gonna have fun like instead of going i'm gonna go to the party and it's gonna be like this and like this and like this and having all these specific expectations for what's going to happen at a party you could just go i'm going to go to the party and i'm going to have a great time 
period and just see what happens so that's that's the way i started going to parties <laughs> way back when i started going to parties um several decades ago um i after a few in my when i was young i would be like oh that was so different than i thought it was gonna be and then i thought you know what i gotta stop painting this picture in my head of exactly how things are going to go because it never works out that way and I'm always kind of like oh hmm so I decided I'm just gonna show up and decide to have a good time and just see what happens and it was so much better that way and that's how I've approached most things in life um, since then so I definitely recommend that Okay, and next is King of Earth. So King of Earth comes up. And again, these are the general messages going in with what I'm going into with the... I already have specific set of things I'm going to be talking about with the uh, energy update. But this was... I was guided to pull these cards from this specific deck to get kind of a, a more solidified message general messages for the entire collective not just you know by the by the zodiac sign i am doing those readings i am i've done four so far so once i get done with the energy update and the guided astral meditation i will be getting back to the uh tarot and oracle Okay, so King of Earth, virile, successful, industrious, devoted, steadfast, steadfast, authoritative, reliable, and dedicated. Take pride in accomplishments, pay it forward, honor your process. Now is not the time to make changes. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Free yourself from control. Don't be lazy. Abuse and or abuse or misuse of power and meaning the king of earth is a very satisfied man and he has every reason to be everything he touches turns to gold his kingdom is secure and wealthy and his people are happy and prosperous while some may consider that his circumstances are born of luck he is a natural leader and his successes his success is born of hard work and dedication he is proud of his accomplishments and is not afraid to a, a, acknowledge them and more importantly to enjoy them however despite any appearance of excess he is very grounded and realistic and enjoys abundance because he is wise and careful the king of earth is not afraid to be open or candid because he has no insecurities or emotional baggage to feed doubts and fears he is only too willing to share in his success and gives advice and guidance without hesitation when asked. He does not fear that doing so will give rise to a competitor or rival. He believes that everyone is entitled to the same opportunities. He is clear-minded and reliable, someone you can trust and depend on. He is also wise and intelligent, and these factors keep him at a for at the forefront of all that he does on a business level some may see him as boring and pedantic he is or sorry but his methods are sound uh he has found a process that works for him and no one that and one that pays dividends why change what yields results if his methods fail then he is willing to change but if the methods work then change is not required and is an unnecessary waste of time and energy he is not one to try and fix what sorry he is not one to try and fix that which is not broken I relate to that. I'm like, if it's working, great. If it's efficient, awesome. If it breaks down, let's fix it. But otherwise, let's concentrate on things that, that need attention. Um, the King of Earth may appear in your reading to tell you that it is okay to rejoice in your successes. All too often, we are made to feel that taking pride in our success equates to being boastful. This can lead to feelings of guilt and, and a decision to say, stay silent. 
While you can choose your moments and be respectful of others' feelings, the King of Earth suggests that you have every right to celebrate your achievements and take pride in your accomplishments. If you have the resources and means to enjoy yourself, then do so. There's no need to ask for anyone's permission or blessing. This is, this is after all, why you have worked so hard. The King of Earth may also symbolize a need to take a methodical approach that you know will work for you. At this time, do not deviate or take a chance on trying something new. Do not allow the opinions of others to sway you either. Instead, trust in your usual process, especially if it has always worked for you in the past. Awesome. Okay, so that's the second card in a row saying it's good and you need to stop and literally smell the roses of your garden and what you planted and rejoice in your blessings and be and have pride in it talk about it be happy about it that sort of thing so two of these in a row saying that it's also saying it's it's this is not uh, it's not time to to just rest on this it's time to keep doing what you're doing know what works for you um in all in different ways of your in your life who is good to have be around who is not what's good to eat what's not how it works best for you to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish where you may be lacking and and need to improve and be honest with yourself about that so that's what's coming through with um, the King of Earth. One more time. Let's take a look at that beautiful card, King of Earth. Love that. Okay. And then we have Union. Uh, this is the 13th card of the Major Arcana here. Here we are. And let's see Union once again. This is beautiful. I love this card. This artwork is this this artwork is really awesome actually. I love her artwork. So we have this a Celtic knot infinity symbol. We have a butterfly we have a like the divine feminine the divine masculine going on we have this like the all-seeing eye um we have a a hawk and a wolf um we have all this vegetation this is a really beautiful card. So Union, and I encourage you to look this up on Google. Just look for the look for the picture online and images. Um, Dreams, Dreams of Gaia Tarot by Raven Phelan, and that's the thirteenth uh, card. So number thirteen, one and and three make a four we're going into the fourth month so that is being pointed out to me wholeness marriage unity connection integration harmony alignment and peace unity and wholeness harmony arises when we are in alignment you have unlimited potential a path that marries science and spirituality duality creates separation the marriage of body mind and soul all is connected complete self-acceptance do not dominate or be submissive at the center is the void you are a temple worship within fear and need cornerstones of dependency fear and need the cornerstones of dependency the union card symbolizes unity and wholeness. It represents our relationship with ourself and our relationship with the world around us. It represents the harmony that arises when we are in alignment within and with both. Sorry. It represents the harmony that arises when we are in alignment within and with both the seen and the unseen worlds around us to achieve this centered state 
is our fifth reason for being. Who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Self-inquiry puts our feet upon the path of wholeness. It is part of our life quest, and only in seeking questions and seeking answers do we become whole. It is a journey that manifests in self-discovery. We come into the world innocent and pure, while in the womb our soul is still as one with the source of all, the void, the cosmic womb, from which all came to be and all will return. Our soul remembers that connection. The soul remembers its unlimited potential. It remembers that it is whole and divine. This knowledge and all that we experienced before taking our first breath in this life resides within our unconscious mind where it could motiv where it could motivate and guide us if it were not for the fact that from birth we experience a life that is conflicting in every way as we grow to adulthood we are taught to define limit repress suppress and deny while we can be surrounded by people who support us and tell us that we are capable of anything we set our mind to achieving we may still limit and restrict our potential by embracing labels and definitions. Furthermore, we are born into a race that divides and separates into tribes. The tribes maintain that they want peace, but thrive and profit more from conflict and war. Two of the largest tribes are science and religion. Many of the people of each tribe hold those of the other in contempt. You've heard the arguments. Science is founded in fact and reality. Religion and its more op religion and its more open and expansive form spirituality are founded in myth and make believe. One is based in logic, analysis, and reason. The other is based in faith, emotion, and imagination. However, if you scratch the surface and look a little closer, both are founded in theory. Both require trust and conviction. Both are loved and defended with the same level of convic conviction. Both could co coexist in harmony. It's really such an awesome observation because it's one of the things when I started spiritually awakening going through that process and i started i was just ravenously consuming information online in every which way that i was guided i went down a bazillion rabbit holes and i noticed that and i started kind of mapping out how science was over here spirituality was over here and even in both sections there's so there's such separation but there's definitely separation between these two worlds that somehow coexist in this reality, but are so very separate. Don't really cross over and speak to each other. And as a psychic physical empath, medical medium, channel, and somebody who's really just gotten into this very, very recently and have had my own programs and things set up, even though when I was five years old, is when I started getting um, or, or being able to really understand the messages I was getting from people's uh, guides, uh, most, mostly, uh, most exclusively their guardian angels. And so even though at a very young age, I was very much, I, f I already knew that I was an old soul from a super young age, it was weird as I grew older that people had a question about that. Um, I understood that there was others around me. Um, I didn't really know how to articulate things. I didn't start seeing apparitions and things and astral traveling until I was older, levitating till I was older, or consciously healing till I was much older much much older or understanding anything about any of this stuff until i was much older um like a lot of people we're programmed where we live in a certain world and certain framework but when you're very different <laughs> on the inside and how you perceive how you feel like i was very physically ill my entire life and it was always very confusing because i would go to the doctors and get tests and all that stuff and nothing would come back i could like my medical files are so fat from head to toe let me tell you and 
And finally, when I was 25 years old, back in 90, uh, when was that? That would have been like 95, um, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, and I fit that criteria perfectly. And my doctor was like, I've never seen such a severe case in my life. You're the most severe case. It was really, really quite, quite bad. And, um, but it felt good to have an answer, have a diagnosis after, you know, 25 years of things just shifting and changing and feeling sort of decent, not being able to get out of bed for months at a time. Like it was just very, very difficult because I didn't understand how sensitive I was to energies, the energies around me, people that I was constantly filtering through energy around, um, just in the atmosphere, um, from other people and animals that I was naturally healing people that I was, um, connecting and doing all this stuff. It was just what I did. And I kind of attribute that to a lot of us. A lot of people are like this. They don't know what they are because it's, it's again, circling back to the beginning here. It's not discussed. It's not talked about, you know, there's mental illness, there's physical problems, but people don't understand energy and spirituality and blend it in with these other things that we do un, you know understand sort of even though if we really think about it the medical industry and community and everything it's just it's all it's all guessing and trying to figure out and they don't know they don't know <laughs> The interesting thing is, is as a medical medium and psychic and s somebody who connects spiritually, I do know. So I can connect with somebody and I start to get all this information, not only um, what it is, what it's connected to, why it's working that way or not working that way, and remove the energy that's causing those problems. That's very woo, but it's also about physics and energy and and quant and the quantum reality that we live in that everything is energy and so when we have issues in our lives whether it's physical or emotional trauma whether it was um devastation on it like a in a big type of situation from like weather or war whether it was um, ongoing abuses or a big event or an injury or you name it, what can happen to a person in their life that is quote unquote, that is a negative thing. And sometimes some it, it may not seem like that big of a deal at the time, or it may seem like a really big deal at the time. So it, let's take it from like, it can be is something like um, being called fat as a child and and the ramifications or whatever that's connected to it causes so much distress and is so and it literally is like an energetic bruise tear in the system. And because of that, we get out of alignment our thoughts our perception our feelings our need to to either um f the fight or flight uh protection or being angry to numb with substances or um or do risk you know be go engage in different types of risky behaviors all of these things can stem from from something as you know being bullied as a child um that that in maybe now people are starting to understand that that's much more damaging than before but but you know still i it's it's not like you were stabbed in seventh grade and that you know was this big event even though energetically spiritually emotionally you were stabbed in seventh grade from this event you know from this from the, the situation or on the other side it could be something like you were in a really bad car accident and both of your legs or one of your legs was broken and you were 
um, out of commission. You couldn't work. You couldn't get around. You had to go to physical therapy five times a week. That you had to learn how to walk again. It was this huge deal. You went to physical therapy. You had surgery. You went. You were on some type of pain management. All of these things, but. Was this addressed energetically? Was it addressed spiritually? Did we did we um, clear out the energy of the ongoing trauma from the accident to getting to the hospital to being diagnosed with what we're going to do with your with your leg, going through the surgery, waking up from the surgery, being in pain, going through recovery, going. Through, I mean, this is and that's not to say, you know, what happened with your finances? How did this affect your family? What who had to take care of you? How are things disrupted? You see what I'm saying here? That's that's a lot of energy. And if that stays, that you may heal physically, but on an energetic, spiritual, emotional level, that's still a, an open wound that is that can be infected by other things. So this is why a lot of times you'd be like, oh, I had this shoulder injury 20 years ago, but every so often it acts up really bad. And typically it's usually around an ongoing stressful situation or something happened and it's just like a it's a valley that can be pooled with negative energy until it re, until it causes so much dissonance that the body starts to be in pain and it starts and the body the rest of the body has to regulate what's going on and so there's so you'll have different things happening um maybe the same thing you normally eat maybe you eat it and it doesn't sit well with you because the energy to help process it through your body is being to your life force is being taken to this you know deal with this and all the other stuff that now your solar plexus chakra your digestive system's off or maybe it's affecting like other things it can just go on and on um, how this works but this these are not things that are that are looked at that are thought about that are maintained that are cleared out that are healed with people and and this can just snowball into other things um, so from my perspective I see things very um, very mechanical very energetic but also extremely um, emotionally and spiritually and how it affects everything because all of these bodies when you ask a person how many bodies do you have most people will say one i have one body this is my body are you a crazy person for asking me how many bodies i have like i don't have any in the garage <laughs> when the truth of the matter is we have more than that we have the physical body the energetic body the uh spiritual body the emotional body and the etheric body and that's a lot or the um lot and also the the emotional the emotional body spiritual body energetic body uh physical body and yeah etheric body so all of these bodies are doing their best to work with you and to keep you going at optimal level as best it can all the time. How you treat it, the fuel you put into it, how much rest you give it, the life force you give it, the place that, you know, what you surround yourself by, who's in your atmosphere, what the energy is like, your stress levels, all of this is a deal with your uh, life force. And if you have a overabundance you're hitting you're at a hundred percent or more all the time with your life force then there's no decay there's no aging there's not there's nothing happening that's that's out that's not getting better um the body is designed to constantly be running at 110 percent if it doesn't have to use life force to maintain and like help you digest a bunch of shit and help you you know regulate your energy because you're sleeping horribly or you're spending 20 hours in front of a computer or video games or you're around you're working a super stressful life like these are all things that deplete 
your life force battery. And if you're not energetically in alignment and clear, you're going to feel this by being stressed and tired and emotional, having anxiety, having pain in your joints, being sore, being confused, having brain fog, um, um, having a hard time with memory, things like that. There's, I mean, and it goes on and on into up to major, major problems, mentally, emotionally, physically, and energetically, all of those things. Everybody's a little different. And this is why health and energy and, and pain and addictions and relationship um awareness and emotional intelligence and all of these things are so different for people because everybody's a little different in how they how their body manages energy bottom line so anyway Back to this, um, but I was just very much guided to, to get into that because of what she talks here about this separation between science and spirituality. And even science and science and spirituality and spirituality, there's just so many slices of the pie. It can be definitely difficult to find the lane that is true and real. And that's something we all have to figure out for ourselves i can say what i tell you is true and real and to listen to me but you have to decide to open up and feel into it long enough to decide what i am saying is true and real instead of just like that's stuff I've never heard of so it can't be real and if it's not a thing that it's not a thing and you're making it up or whatever you know or you could be like that makes a lot of sense like a lot of people that find me that are guided to me that I help that I heal they're like I've never I never saw it like this I never heard of this I never I never had this information but now that I do it's absolutely resonating because this is how it feels so it doesn't matter if it can't be qualified in a million books or being cited in papers or anything like that. When you hear something and know something is real on a soul-based level, you know it to be true. That's that's it. That's all that that's all that you need. But we do tend to put a lot of stock into I forgot I even had the window open. This is Oh, look at that. <laughs> but we tend to put a lot of stock in into, you know, what's been previously um, documented, you know, and and it's like if you can't, it doesn't matter what the truth is if you can't prove the truth. And that's where science comes in is if there's a, a specific way to prove out this is what it is, then this is what it is. But when it comes to energy work or spirituality a lot of those type of people that want numbers on a on a screen won't spend the time to explore and and let things be revealed as it's like there's cause and effect there's we do this you get this is what you do and this is your outcome and that's how i work this is what we have this is what we, this is the work that we do and this is the outcome and there's always a, a change a transition we go from pain to, to not pain or less pain and then we work through the rest of it because there's only so much a body can can process out or release and 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 acclimate to at any given time so sometimes um, healing is very quick we have instant results and for some things it's a little bit longer and it really depends on the person um, but as long as you're striving to clear out energy and heal and be more aware of yourself and how the energy in your body works and how you're affected by different things and what is best for you and what works for you then you can you can regulate your body your energy from a place uh, from a perspective of the known instead of the unknown instead of this is what my body is doing I don't know why now I've got to try to reverse engineer what the hell is happening or what happened and and sometimes that those questions never get answered because you're coming from a place that 
puts you behind the eight ball. You can't see where you're going because everything's a muck mess. But when you're cleared out and you can feel your body super, super clearly, then anything that's off even a little bit, you'll know about it sooner than later and you can regulate that within yourself before it becomes a real problem. Um, So anyway, let's get back to it. All right. Too many of those who follow a scientific path A belief in God is a sign of mental illness and dysfunction. Wait, what? (laughs) Too many of those who follow a scientific path, a belief in God is a sign of... Oh, they're saying, okay, two people who follow a scientific path, people who believe in God is a sign of mental illness or dysfunction. Okay. To many of those who follow a religious path, non-believers follow a path that leads to damnation and eternal suffering. Who is right and who is wrong? The answer is that both tribes are, are but aspects of a greater whole. Only in embracing both science and spirituality do we find the answers to a larger, to larger questions. Spirituality and science are not mutually exclusive. Spirituality... Fa- Spirituality founded in science and science that embraces spirituality and the divine offer far greater opportunities to explore and understand the universe and all that dwells within than either standing on its own. Most definitely. Each can and does enhance and expand our perception of the other. Most definitely. I've been wanting and I'm really hoping at some point to align myself with some type of lab where i can be kind of um uh observed while i do the work that i do to monitor or to see how energy is moving within me and within the other person or the animal that i'm working with because i feel like if those things can be seen and extrapolated energetically you know by monitoring energy around me and around the person and and changes in in heat zones and stuff like that like i can put my hands on a person and feel where the pain is without being told because the energy is is moving differently than it is in other places um so it's like a a scan thing that i do but i don't need to be with the person i could just you know you could be in across the world and i can tap in with you and get that information as well because again it's energy it's feeling energy it's either i could either touch it with my hands or i could touch it with my with tapping in Either way, I'm touching your energy. It doesn't matter where you are, where I am. Okay. The union card represents the bringing together of many aspects of our world that we have been taught to separate from the whole. All is connected, as above, so below. The universe in which we dwell is multifaceted and whole. The earth upon which we dwell is multifaceted. Oh, I just read that. And whole. (laughs) Deja vu. Uh, all that dwells beside us upon this blue green earth is multifat. Oh, she just says this actually three times. We, humanity, are multifaceted and whole, and we have a symbiotic relationship with that whole. As the dominant species on the planet, the very health of the whole planet is dependent on our own health and unity as a species. And so we must reconnect and integrate and become one with all once more. Yeah, most definitely. And that's why I work work exclusively with Mother Earth Gaia in our healings. She connects, she talks to you, she works with your energy. As we heal one, we heal all. And so that is always at like the beginning, the front and center. We're healing you, but we're healing everyone. Because as you are healed, as you are connected to Gaia, as you are grounded and infused with love light energy, as we extrapolate pain from your body, that energy is lifted and transmitted muted from the entire whole of this planet including the energy that it takes of um, our mother earth Gaia to support all of these different things going on with all of us so as one is healed it shifts and changes everything so it's like I'm seeing like the vision that I'm getting to help people understand would be like if you have a container of pearls 
and you pull out one of the pearls. It shifts all of the pearls. They don't stay the same because you've taken out energy. You've removed something. So everything has to shift. Things don't just stay suspended the way that they were. It's impossible. Once you remove energy, it's changed and shifted and transmuted forever. And therefore, everything in that and everything around that has shifted and changed forever. It's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, <sighs> the union card symbolizes the marriage of body, mind, and soul, and the recognition and acceptance of our own divinity and connection. We are physical beings who are meant to live a life that includes and embraces both the physical and the spiritual. We are unique and individual beings, but also part of a greater whole. We are told that love is all and that at, and that at the center, when all all is in harmony and enlightenment and oh my gosh i'm having such a hard time reading right now <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm gonna start from the top from the top <laughs> we are told that love is all and that at the center when all is in harmony and alignment there is only love but while love is important at the center there is only the peace and stillness of the void it is in unifying all and experiencing the peace that is born in that moment that we remember what it was like to first dwell in the void and to dwell in the womb. In that place of pure stillness and silence, all is created. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's very true. Um, love is like love is the candle but the unity the void the the womb is the flame so so without love we wouldn't have the candle without love we wouldn't have the structure to hold the unity in place so we need that that is the 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 structure that holds creation and the multiverse in place but what that creates is this beautiful void the flame the energy that everything comes from in that that womb space oh so good <laughs> Oh, it's so good. And we can feel that here in our lives, alive and in a body. And that's what it feels to be in bliss and have joy and peace and harmony and unity and all that good stuff. It's just really awesome. This is coming through here. Okay, I'm going to... She, she has um, the present and then the future. So I'm going to go. I'm being guided to read all of it. So... If you're with me, thank you for being with me um, and getting all of this. So, uh, so she also gets into the past, but the past position. So past, present, and future, she actually gets into all of these positions. But I'm just going to read the present and the future. So the present. The union card in the present position represents divine union the marriage of male and female aspects within the self both the masculine and feminine principle resides within all that is and all that will be they are aspects of the whole equal in purpose and function you yourself are both masculine and feminine regardless of physical gender or sexual preference and for unification and creation to be achieved each must be present and honored equally now it is time to open and embrace the feminine within you without fear to receive and accept the true and beautiful nature of your physical self and to allow it to be without shame judgment or condemnation it is time for complete self-acceptance of how you think feel believe perceive and appear 
now it is time to open and embrace the masculine within you without fear to be strong and powerful without a desire to compete control or dominate remember however that while the divine masculine may not seek to dominate it is not submissive use logic and reason but not to the exclusion of emotions and intuition embrace the divine and feminine by honoring your emotions and allowing them to flow without represent uh, repression or denial accept your thoughts and beliefs as being a reflection of your truth and reality <sighs> love your physical form without condition treat it as a temple and worship within step into the flow and use your intuition with trust and confidence and marry it with logic and reason be sensitive be vulnerable be strong be compassionate be kind be active be creative be all be whole so that be creative i gotta say one of the first channeled messages that i got before i mean years and years and years before i was ever awake in any way was the key is to create and at the time i didn't know how important that was but we are created to be creational so the more that you create for yourself for others for gaia the more that you think about bringing in and connecting to your soul and the divine and your your guides and guardians to put out into the world maybe at first just for you and then for the world we are guided and 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 motivated to create to be creational so however you can be creational as much as you can be creational and be cre and be creative and support others who are creative um really just keep adding to that pool of creativity um and that includes science that includes technology that includes the arts that includes everything everything you know nothing exists without an idea without being without creation you know anything else i mean nature gaia is constantly creating in so many infinite beautiful ways but so are we and she's holding us and she's supporting us um, with those creations so um, definitely something to be mindful of and remember and work on always okay and future when the union card appears in the future position it symbolizes stepping into the void within and using this time ahead to create it is a very affirming but simple meaning create your or center sorry it is a very affirming but simple meaning center yourself allow peace to flow through you and fill your senses what do you do with this powerful moment is your choice but make it but make the time to use it. So use that that fire, that spark, that passion to to create whatever again, whatever that is. It's so funny. I didn't know that that was the future was about creation. And I was just talking about that. Well, go figure. Um, so, wow, that was really awesome. So this is really coming in to tell us we need to, you know, as we go into spring and into uh, April, that we need to stop, literally smell the roses before they've even bloomed about where we've been, especially like in in globally thinking about where we've been with the pandemic, you know, this this last year and a couple months and what we've accomplished and how the the collective of humans on this planet have adjusted and what we've learned and how we've grown so think about that think about you personally how you've had to adjust what you've had to to deal with how what's changed for you what are those things that 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 you were grateful for in the chain and with these changes what were difficult what are triggering for you how have you grown what have you worked on what is different in your surroundings all of these things just take inventory i'm hearing take inventory um and then our um <laughs> our archangel card is the star with uh archangel jophia happy times make positive optimistic long-term plans on the right path so oh man so this is this is very much this is just like these this 
whole thing with union is telling us and what's interesting what's really interesting is that uh a couple nights ago i was tapping in because i was feeling all sorts it was the 30th going into the 31st our last day of march and i was like i tapped in with gaia with merlin with archangel michael and metatron and i call them my my m squads mother earth metatron michael merlin <laughs> and um and just like yo what's going on what is what is this that i'm feeling i'm feeling this really interesting energy and i just kept seeing like i i got the i the energy the download world worlds collide worlds collide and i saw this like integration of of literally like two universes two worlds like literally like taking over and blending together and i was and it but it was a really good thing and i was like whoa and it, every time i'm like what is and i was like i just come and it was just back and forth like tennis like what's happening worlds collide what's going to happen worlds collide like it was just like this back back and forth thing with this and getting this unit this union card is really um uh making sense with this with that energy because it's really saying that we need to um now it is the time to open and embrace the masculine within you now is the time to open and embrace the feminine to get this in harmony and union to be in alignment and union with our soul so we can create um to think about creating it's all about creating um, the the Stargate. I'm gonna this. I'm gonna get into that into into the actual the real video. This is just the, the pre video. Getting the the cards that is also gonna help with everything else that I had coming through. So I'm not gonna get into that right now. But what 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 the cards are saying here generally with what we can expect to happen with the Stargate for us with each of us um, individually and collectively is that we is to really take time and integrate it into our body where we've been what we've accomplished what we've healed from take inventory of what we need to do know that that we're we're figuring things out for ourselves better and better all the time and to let go and release anything that is um, not serving us anymore take inventory of ener energies that we need to go like go and release cut cords accordingly and um and move into i'm hearing move into the future knowing that there's so much light coming in uh with this stargate we have on the on four four um this stargate is all about connecting with um our souls ourselves um balancing out the divine feminine divine masculine but also really coming into um greater acceptance awareness relationship with our guides and our guardians it's this is the month that we're really that it's really um being focused on from guardian angel to archangels to dragons who are also of the angelic realm um and gaia herself um but specifically our the angelics who are with us um and whether or not we're earth angels or not we all have guardian angels we all have connections to archangels and this is the month that they're saying um like last month was was heavy with um uh more ascended masters more of that like not that not that archangels can't also cross over into that but it's just a little bit different um with that so archangel jophiel with the star is really saying that 
we can plan on on an upwards trajectory if we take time to to really really get into a faithful place a trusting place with our guidance and we can make plans and not and let go of of anxiety let go of the what ifs and the things going wrong and and any of that stuff that holds us back we can we can start really releasing more baggage and more traumas when it comes to um our love friendship partnerships any of that stuff really start seeing the positive balancing out how we view those things so we can move forward in a way that is going to allow for these happy times and making optimistic plans and really knowing we're on the right path because we are allowing ourselves to be guided so if we go forward with this understanding that we're going to be um safe and protected we're we're gonna have what we need and to let go of expectations and you know how that's going to all play out okay so like i said this was the the pre the pre video to the main video to the energy update i'm going to get into so thank you for joining me on this video if you did i really appreciate it you taking a deeper dive into this um and uh i will see you soon please do the meditation i'm not sure how that's going to go if i'm going to have a separate um video for that or if it's just going to be all in that one energy update video too because i am going to be getting into a few things so we'll just see how long that is but no matter what please um partake of the of the channel the guided astral meditation that i will be doing all of my meditations are channeled i just will kind of know a theme or who may be showing up but i never know i never design them or write them out or know you know go buy a script at all it's all channeled and mostly directly from Gaia and the Archangels and and Merlin comes in as well but um, aside from that I don't know what's going to happen but I know it's going to be awesome I know we're going to have activations I know we're going to be integrating with light codes I know that we're going to be grounding with Gaia and getting some channeled messages so I'm excited about that um and in the meantime uh you can check out the the four tarot uh videos that i have out for april so far which is aries taurus gemini and cancer and i will be getting to the other tarots after my meditation and energy update video so thanks again for being here and i will see you soon bye for now